Yeah, thanks, Cornelia, for the introduction. So this, this might be a little bit an exotic uh, talk. Uh, I have two warnings or apologies uh, to do at the beginning. So the presentation is about speech, which is kind of the dark, no, I rehearsed it the wrong way, dark end of NLP. Um, but uh, be aware, uh, yeah, be reassured, I will focus on the NLP part of it. And uh, this is likely to be my last talk before my professional retirement, so I hope you forgive me some backward-looking uh, statements. And um, backward-looking, I start right away. Namely, I start with a conclusion. <laughs> and uh, the conclusion is simply, how can anyone be so stupid and uh, create uh, a, start, uh, a company to sell TTS for Romansh and Swiss German? There is only a very small market there's no real need. The target uh, audience also understands uh, uh, standard German as well. And uh, TTS for Swiss German proves to be extremely difficult. So the whole thing was kind of doomed to fail. And maybe I should have rather presented this as w at one of these uh, fashionable fuck up nights. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, I will, uh, I will show you a little bit uh, what we did and how far we uh, got. So uh, about uh, myself, uh, I spent my entire professional life in TTS. I, I, I'm not able to do anything else but TTS, I think. Uh, always for standard languages. I co-founded uh, TTS and ASR company SVOX in 2001, which became one of the two world leading uh, speech synthesis companies in, for in-car navigation uh, uh, systems. Cornelia Pub, as she mentioned already, she worked for us and uh, helped uh, to make the company a success. So thank you very much, Cornelia, at this point uh, for your work there. Uh, another product you might know is the Pico TTS, which is a, a small footprint uh, TTS system which comes as a standard on Android uh, OS. The architect of this system is sitting there, Shamay Safra. Um, and by the way, I just mentioned it uh, orally. Uh, we also sold, uh, or we, uh, yeah, we delivered TTS uh, as the first TTS in uh, Google Translate speech output. But that was later, later replaced by Google's own developments. So this company was quite successful, and it was sold to our biggest competitor, Nuance Communications, in 2011. And uh, this put me in a position to finally do what I ever always wanted to do, namely do TTS for my own mother tongue, which is Swiss German, which was never a topic, of course, in the other company. And so I co-founded the Slowsoft uh, game, uh, game Behind 2014, together with Shamai, uh, with the aim to just do that TTS and uh, uh, some ASR for the Swiss minority languages, Swiss, German, and the neglected uh, Romansh. So uh, let me say a few words about Romansh. Romansh, the fourth official language of Switzerland, has about uh, 50,000 uh, speakers left. Uh, it is divided into five so-called idioms, which are groups of similar uh, dialects and an artificial standard called Romansh Grijun. Uh, each of these idioms and Romansh Grijun have their own orthography and uh, their own standard of writing. Uh, and there are very large differences between uh, the idioms, even larger than between uh, Swiss German dialects, it seems to me at least. Uh, the idioms can and must be treated like individual languages for TTS. So to cover Romansh, you have to uh, build about six TTS systems or six uh, languages in your uh, TTS system. And of course, we are in a situation with uh, very small data, few resources available, uh, no corpora uh, that you could use uh, really, uh, especially no speech corpora uh, labeled and annotated. But nevertheless, we managed to implement one first version or initial version of the Vallada uh, idiom, which is spoken in lower engine in that is, oh. Sorry. What is yeah, here? Oh, get, oh, it's better down here, I think. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, yes, this region here. OK. Um, 
So let's have a look at uh, where NLP comes into TTS. NLP plays an absolutely important role in TTS, maybe not in the same way as you know it uh, in your applications, but it really has a great role. Uh, there are three tasks we have to solve by NLP in a TTS system. The first is provide phonetic transcriptions for each word of your input, even in case that the word is unknown. Um, this is usually done by morphological analysis using phonetic dictionaries uh, and, for unknown words, grapheme to phoneme or T to P uh, conversion, so deriving phonetics from uh, orthography. The second uh, very important task is the disambiguation of uh, mainly heterophonic homographs, that is, work with identical spelling but different pronunciation, of course, very important for TTS. And uh, the third task is the derivation of uh, some sentence structure information for the derivation of an appropriate sentence accentuation and prosodic phrasing. Uh, yeah, I, okay. So, as I said, we are for Romansh and Swiss German, we are in a small data situation, but luckily, that's good luck for us, TTS has uh, been there for many, many years and always in actually, or until just recently in these uh, small data environments. Uh, and that's why we can rely on that and uh, just take a classical TTS setup to do our Romansh and hopefully Swiss German. So how does that look? Uh, this is the classical TTS uh, uh, processing diagram. You have mainly two basic blocks, the front end and the back end. Very silly names, but uh, it's often called like that. The front end converts orthographic text into a phonological representation that contains phonetic transcriptions, accents, phrases, uh, phrase boundaries, phrase types and the backend transfers this into the actual speech signal. Um, the, so all this, the processing in the NLP part is it starts more or less usually with the text preprocessing, treating abbreviations and numbers. Then you have some kind of word analysis and G to P, graphene to phoneme conversion, which traditionally uses uh, finite state morphology using phonetic dictionaries and uh, that provides you also with the phonetic transcription for the words. You have some kind of sentence analysis. Uh, for us, it's kind of a shallow syntactic parsing using uh, phrase structure grammars, very, very traditional. Um, at least you have to have something here that disambiguates your homographs and provides you with some structural information to derive accentuation and prosodic phrasing. And you finally need some sentence level phonetic transformations to get the phonological representation. All this can be done rule based and has been done over and over. Of course, newer approaches now use uh, neural networks and what have you there. Uh, but it can be done rule-based. The biggest resource here that you need and the most important one is phonetic dictionaries. And not even that exists for, uh, for Romansh and Swiss German. So we had to build them on our own. Uh, so that works well for, for Romansh, but the real beast is Swiss German. I mean, Romansh is, you have six languages may, more or less, but they are well behaved. And now comes Swiss German. Uh, which is nasty, really. Uh, and you know why, of course, uh, Swiss German has no standard representation in writing. This causes a lot of trouble. And the question then is, of course, what uh, input uh, uh, text should we use for doing t text to speech in Swiss German? And the answer is, of course, it depends. And it depends on the application. And in some applications, you really have no choice. You, you, uh, Imagine uh, you have to read aloud SMS in, for, for instance, blind people. You want to read a Swiss German SMS to them. And then you have no choice then to take what uh, is written there nowadays by young people especially. Um, everyone writes as he or she likes and all depends also on the dialect. So uh, you have uh, uh, really a mess here. And um, But you, it's not standardized, but of course, we can read it as humans, and of course, ultimately, you want to do a TTS system for that as well. But this is certainly the most difficult application that we can have, and we have not started uh, 
this, but we would like to attack that as well. There is clearly a need. Um, so in other applications, such as uh, dialogue systems, robotics, and so on, it would, what would be really desirable would be to, that you could just take standard German as input and your system would convert it into uh, Swiss German output. And you could, would have a knob to turn the, uh, to switch the dialect from one dialect to another, even maybe somewhere in between. Um, that would be really desirable. And, uh, but you know, uh, at least the ones that uh, know Swiss German, you know that uh, standard German and Swiss German are not one-to-one -one corresponding in the word order uh, in other syntactic uh, uh, things. For instance, Swiss German has no past tense. It's all converted to perfect. Uh, you have no genitive. Uh, and you have to add, for instance, um, article before proper names here, der Peter, Peter. Uh, so actually you need kind of a translation step or really a translation step between from standard German to kind of a normalized form uh, to do Swiss German from, uh, from that. And that is a difficult task. Actually the rules that could do that would be relatively simple. And uh, however, they only work if your input is uh, analyzed really absolutely accurately. Otherwise, it's, it, you do more harm to, to, uh, to the output than, uh, than if you didn't convert anything at all. We have gone a little bit into that direction, but uh, it's really tough. So as a first intermediate step, uh, we, we considered also uh, the normalized Swiss German as TTS input. This is a, a form used uh, often now also for annotating Swiss German corpora. The thing is, you, for every Swiss German word, you just take the a, a corresponding standard German word and uh, write uh, so pseudo -stando, uh, standard German uh, in the word order uh, as Swiss German is pronounced. Of course, you have to invent some words. All the words that with a DD in brackets behind are words that do not really occur in standard German. So for them, you have to make something up, up like uh, losen or posten. You just have to introduce that as uh, pseudo standard German words. But uh, like that, the TTS task is certainly much easier. Uh, but it's, of course, relatively awkward to write text input in this scheme. So uh, your dialog writer would not really like that. So ultimately, we would go for the other goal, standard German input. But nevertheless, we can start with that. And it may seem really much easier than, uh, than, uh, than it really is. So we really, even with that kind of input, we have a lot of troubles. Uh, I, I just uh, show you one example. Um, if you have okay, okay, this minen here, uh, in standard German, I mean, we have four interpretations morphosyntactically. It uh, can be a verb in infinitive or plural one or plural two, or it can be a possessive pronoun, accusative or dative. In standard German, you always have the same phonetics, mine, 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 mine. In Swiss German, it's four different phonetics. So if you mess up this analysis here, you get this wrong output. Really, absolutely tricky. The other candidate uh, is two and uh, yeah, a lot. There are numerous examples of these things. And it's mainly, believe it or not, it's mainly function words that causes these problems. Uh, something that in other NLP applications you just throw away at the beginning. So uh, we are in a different situation here. And uh, as, as a conclusion, Swiss German, if you do Swiss German TTS like that, you just need a much more accurate NLP than standard German needs. I mean, for standard German, you can just tolerate many, many more analysis errors. So there are other, I don't want to go too much into detail, even, even uh, compositional phonetics, uh, as I call it, is difficult. Uh, I mean, if you have compound nouns in German, you can think that, uh, or usually in standard German it works, you have a uh, pronunciation for the first part and for the second part. If you put these together, you get, uh, get the pronunciation for this whole uh, uh, noun, Fragezeichen in this case, for instance. And, but if you do the same for Swiss German, it doesn't work. Uh, and the reason is that you have two different 
uh, analysis one is not so obvious, but this is the one that you need to do Swiss German. Uh, so with a binding E, which is not an obvious uh, analysis here. So the risk is that we might need phonetic compound lexical for Swiss German in order to treat that appropriately, but that's not quite clear if you really need it. And it goes further with the problems. Uh, sometimes we mix standard German and Swiss German, like in fixed expressions, for instance, Gott sei Dank. It's not Gott sieg Dank, which would be uh, real Swiss German. We use this, uh, the uh, standard German form here. Another uh, problem that we ran into was ausgezeichnet and auszeichnet. So it's written the same way, but once it's spoken more standard German-like, etc., depending on the, whether it's a figurative sense or not. And so all this you should get from your NLP. But uh, actually, TTS just really mercilessly makes NLP errors audible. And this is, uh, it acts like a magnifying glass for NLP errors. And you know it all, uh, even the best of NLP makes errors, and, but you want your dialogue system TTS output to be correct, of course. So we must offer some uh, uh, possibility to correct things. And one thing is that we offer the possibility to mark up uh, categories and other word features in the text. Uh, actually, so far we have used our own uh, uh, tags here, but we will shortly move, shortly move to the Stuttgart, Tübingen, uh, standard uh, tag set, which will allow us to connect uh, more closely to other NLP uh, projects. And we will also uh, offer a markup for standard German usage, uh, like this got sei dank instead of got sieg dank. And in extreme case, we will also have uh, the uh, speech synthesis markup language where you can annotate phonetics if really need be. Yeah, so. Let's just have some demos. Uh, this is always the most interesting part. Uh, just to show you a little bit how far we got. Uh, and now, how? <laughs> My goodness, how can I play this now? Uh, uh, the mouse has somewhat disappeared. Maybe just remove that. Okay, so first a Romansh example uh, in this Valada um, idiom. For the, is anyone here who speaks uh, Romansh actually? Okay, which idiom? Uh, Sorry? Putea. Okay, so that's very close to Valada. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I really have trouble. Oh, my goodness. How can I make it play? <laughs> this is crazy. Because I have a different view now than in the test. Oh, engineers and technic. Yeah, I also have to. Oh, no, I have to. Okay, okay. Oh. Sorry. This is too complicated. No, no, but why did it work initially? Yeah, it worked when you tested it. Or the other thing is we... we can oh, we you can just play it from here. Right? Ah, but it doesn't play through. Yeah, it doesn't play on the loudspeakers. Oh, my uh, God. Oh. Sounds, and so Sorry. Back. Yeah, the HDMI is not visible here. Uh, sure, yep. we can play it from here. It is loud enough that everyone can hear it. This is the only uh, option I can, can do. Ah, yeah, with the microphone there. The okay. Microphone, huh? Okay. La rumor del film de Oscar Per. In cena dit cino sai a cus label de tornar in a volle de l'acna infanzia. Forse avevel ragion, un rival. Quae savaina, 
and sporender di gilus. Okay, just a small example to make you hear the Romance a bit. Uh, of course, it's difficult to judge if you don't speak the language. Uh, certainly, we are not as far advanced as with the Swiss German. Uh, since uh, halfway through, we uh, switched to more doing Swiss German. And oh, just the next example. So I play you a Swiss German example as well in the form of a dialogue. We have two dialects now, Grisens and Zurich dialect, Bündner Deutsch and Zurich Deutsch. And uh, I just created this small dialogue. Uh, the text that was input to the TTS uh, you see here. Hallo, wer bist du denn? Ich bin der Zino. Woher kommst du? Aus Zürich, das gehört mir doch sicher. Ja, du hast eine richtige zürich -Nura. Was machst du heute Abend? Weiß nicht, vielleicht etwas go essen gehen. Okay, dann komm ich mit. Okay. Ja. So that's how far we got. You see in the text, maybe I had to mark up uh, two places. Uh, ich bin der Zeno, die in Italic, and the vice uh, in the second last uh, line was uh, actually treated as uh, adjective vis, and uh, had to uh, annotate it as a verb. And but vielleicht uh, etwas go esse go. The go there was in, uh, inserted uh, by rule automatically. So you see halfway, or we'll do a little bit into the direction of. Uh, the, uh, con uh, translating these things automatically. Uh, we also have demos, uh, further demos on our web page. And we also have uh, uh, an app on iOS and Android called Segemol, which does speech to speech translation for many languages into Swiss German using uh, Google Translate and Google and Apple recognition in between. But the last step is from us. So from standard German, we do the Swiss German output. And last, uh, just some outlook. Unfortunately, our company will have to be put into kind of a sleep mode, so we just cannot go on as that. But the project will continue. I mean, I will, as I said, uh, retire next year, so we will, can work full force on, <laughs> continue on the project. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think I will. <coughs> Uh, but uh, we have basic TTS technology for Swiss German and Romansch available. And we envisage to have five Swiss German dialects by end of April next year. And of course, we will, or at least myself, I will uh, f work on further improvements, mainly on the NLP part for Swiss German, and if need be, also for Romansch. So that uh, concludes my talk. Thanks for your attention. Any questions in Swiss German or Romansch? Uh, I'll ask in English. But what do you do with sounds that are very unique to Swiss German, like the kh in Kuchentashli mm -hmm. <laughs> and stuff like that? Do you pre-record it by someone? And then uh, yeah. Uh, I did not mention that since I didn't want to go into signal processing part here. Actually, the whole synthesis here is based on so-called unit selection, which is uh, based on a large recordings of one specific speaker that uh, you segment all these recordings into phones uh, and uh, put them together in a new way to form new utterances. Of course, that's really based on recordings. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, hi. Uh, I would like to ask you, since I'm doing the consultant in the Swisscom, uh, they are really complaining when, they, when I talk to them about the Swiss German and the uh, Romanish. Uh, about the recognition when someone is calling automatically to the line and also generation of the responses. Have you worked with them or because if you are <laughs> going to uh, put the company into the sleep mode then they would be maybe interested about this part? Believe me, we have tried many, many times. Um, but it seems that the focus there is uh, lying on ASR for the time being. And this is really the problem that we hear often. OK, now for the, ti uh, for the time being, we can work uh, well with standard German output. Everyone understands it, so why bother? I personally believe that uh, in one or two years, there will be a bigger need for uh, Swiss German output uh, once the ASR has advanced also for Swiss German. And then suddenly, uh, people. Uh, will realize that you also need uh, the other way 
in Swiss terms. Maybe we are just one or two years early. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> but I, I just had to do it now as long as I can work. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Christoph. Thank you.